this is the nerve fiber ending and this is the muscle membrane the blue one is the acetylcholine which is released from the nerve fiber end and this is green one is the acetylcholine receptor this acetylcholine has to be released and combined with the receptor for the muscle contraction to happen here you can see the acetylcholine is being released into the junction and it combines with the acetylcholine receptor and muscle contraction can happen but what happens in myasthenia gravis there are auto antibodies which go and combine with the acetylcholine receptors and destroy them so this acetylcholine when they re release following an impulse it doesn't combine with the receptor for the muscle contraction to happen so that is the reason for muscle weakness coming to various type of myasthenia gravis the first and foremost is ocular myasthenia the tensilon or the hydrophonium test, ice pack test and imaging modality with CT scan and MRI. Coming to receptor, anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody assay, it is measured in the blood by radio immune assay. It usually takes 4 to 6 weeks for the level to come. Normally, it is less than 0.25 nanomole per liter. It is positive only in 50% of ocular myasthenia gravis but in generalized myasthenia gravis it is positive in more than 85% of the patient. Coming to electromyogram, here you can see with repetitive stimulation the normal response is seen. There is no decremental response but with myasthenia gravis you can see the response get decremental. As you go on the response becomes poor. This is one classical sign of myasthenia gravis. With single fiber twitch, you get a jittery response. Coming to the tensilon test, where you give heterophonium, it acts for a few seconds and lasts only for a few minutes. You inject 2 milligram IV over 15 seconds and immediately you can see improvement in muscle function which uh, lasts for 2 to 3 minutes. If no response occurs in 30 to 45 seconds, an additional 8 milligram can be injected. But we are going to look for the degree of ptosis and the range of ocular movement, whether the ptosis has come down and the range of ocular movement has improved. Here you can see the ptosis there. After injection of hydrophonium, the eye is opened completely. How you are going to interrupt the tensilon test? You give hydrophonium, you look for the muscle strength. If the muscle strength is improved, it is possibly myasthenia gravis. If the muscle strength is not improved, you have to look for other reason for muscle weakness. Coming to ice pack test, which is very similar to hydrophonium. Instead of injecting hydrophonium, you keep a ice pack on the high. Here, the cooling may improve the neuromuscular transmission. So, if you place this ice pack over the eye, the patient will become absolutely normal within 2 minutes. The test is positive in more than 80% of the patient with ocular myasthenia. Here, you have the drooping of the eyelid, ptosis is there and ice pack is kept over the eyelid for 2 minutes which improves your neuromuscular transmission and the patient becomes normal within 2 minutes. This is ice pack test. Coming to the imaging modality because of association of myasthenia with thymoma. In chest x-ray, you can see a widening of mediastinum. With CT scan and MRI, there might be a presence of thymoma. Most of the time, you have to do a MRI cranium to rule out royal cranial nerve and orbital muscle involvement. So, how to summarize the diagnostic testing? First is you look at the clinical features. If clinical features are there, you go for serum assay of anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody as well as muscles specific tyrosine kinase antibody. If it is positive, then diagnosis of myasthenia gravis is established. If it is EQ vocal or the level is not too high, you do an electromyogram 
repetitive stimulation. If it is a decremental response, then myasthenia gravis is definite. If that is equivocal, then do a single fiber twitch. There is a jittery response. Then your diagnosis is established. If that is also a doubtful, you do a tensilon test or an ice pack test. Patient clinical improvement is seen. Then probably it is myasthenia gravis and it might be a pure ocular myasthenia gravis. If poor ocular myasthenia gravis is there and patient has ptosis or diplopia, then probably it is myasthenia gravis. If there is no ocular myasthenia, then myasthenia gravis is unlikely. But whenever a doubt of myasthenia gravis is there, always do a CT scan or MRI for thymic screening. This is how you do diagnostic test for myasthenia gravis.